In the quiet rolling plains of the American Midwest, where endless fields of corn and prairie grass stretch beneath an ocean of sky, a team of archaeologists made a discovery that would quietly shake the scientific world to its core, a finding so ancient and so unexpected that it forced experts to rewrite an entire chapter of North America's prehistoric story. It started, as many great discoveries do, by accident. The land was flat, unremarkable, or construction could begin. They expected to find nothing more than the occasional arrowhead or pottery shard. At a depth of nearly two meters were sharp lines, right angles, and repeating shapes, patterns that nature simply doesn't make. But when they returned with magnetometers and electrical resistivity equipment, the anomalies multiplied. Dr. Green stared at the printouts that evening under the dull yellow light of the field tent, tracing her fingers over the arcs and lines. If this is what I think it is, she whispered to her assistant, we may be looking at something no one has ever seen in North America. What they found would defy every expectation about the ancient people of this land. The earth turned a pale gray, mixed with compacted sand and a distinct band of charcoal. They were too straight, too purposefully set. As the team expanded the trench, more stones appeared rows forming perpendicular angles enclosing space. Beneath one corner of the alignment lay a small alcove packed with ash and tiny burned bones, possibly from small mammals or birds. Dr. Green's hands trembled as she brushed away the soil with a fine brush, revealing the crisp edge of a worked stone. Its face smoothed flat, the sides intentionally squared. What emerged was astonishing. A semicircular wall about 25 meters in diameter, built from stacked sandstone slabs, some weighing hundreds of pounds. Two parallel corridors extended outward like arms, lined with smaller stones. Inside the enclosure were smaller stone features, low platforms, narrow niches, and compacted floors stained with ash and charcoal. The first radiocarbon dates only deepened the mystery a time when glaciers still clung to the northern Great Lakes and woolly mammoths had only recently disappeared. Every test came back with nearly identical results. The implications were staggering. According to conventional archaeology, the people living in this region 10,000 years ago were small nomadic bands of hunter-gatherers, mobile, adaptive, and practical. They left behind simple stone tools, not architecture. Yet here was a massive planned structure, geometric, astronomically aligned, and built with care. Excavations continued through the summer. Each new trench revealed details that made the picture clearer and stranger. Some walls appeared to form narrow corridors leading to enclosed rooms, each about two meters wide. Within these, the team found clusters of chipped stone tools, scrapers, microblades, and notched flakes made from chert and quartzite. Through chemical analysis, they discovered that some of the chert had originated from outcrops more than 200 miles away, suggesting the builders either traveled immense distances or traded across vast networks. Around one alcove, they found traces of red ochre, a natural pigment used in ancient symbolic art and ritual. Another trench revealed a pit lined with stone slabs and filled with a fine layer of ash and burnt seeds. Botanists identified remnants of wild goosefoot, cattail tubers, and acorns, staples of early Holocene diets. But it wasn't what they ate that stunned scientists. It was how they lived. The stratigraphy of the site, distinct layers of occupation and rebuilding, suggested people returned to this spot repeatedly, maybe for centuries. And then there were the alignments. The main opening of the semicircular wall faced precisely 112 degrees southeast, the sunrise on the vernal equinox around 8,900 BCE. Other linear walls aligned closely with the solstice, sunrise, and sunset. That level of observation implied patience, continuity, and culture far deeper than anyone had imagined for early North Americans. Dr. Green cautioned against sensationalism but admitted, this wasn't a campsite, it was a statement. These stones were meant to outlast their makers. News of the discovery spread quickly. Within weeks, headlines appeared in national outlets. 10,000-year-old structure found beneath Iowa farmland. Archaeologists rewrite America's prehistory. Skeptics rolled their eyes, 
recalling countless exaggerated claims. But as peer-reviewed data rolled in, doubt gave way to fascination. Radiocarbon dates from independent labs matched within error ranges. Micromorphological studies of soil showed undisturbed layering, proving the stones hadn't shifted naturally. Even skeptics had to concede. Something deliberate had been built here. Theories bloomed. Some researchers suggested the site functioned as a seasonal meeting ground, where migrating hunter-gatherer groups converged to exchange goods, perform rituals, or mark astronomical events. Others saw echoes of early ritual architecture, like the Gobekli Tepe site in Turkey, built around the same time, though Prairie Ring was smaller and simpler. Still, the parallels were tantalizing. Both were circular, both incorporated stone slabs, both aligned with celestial markers, and both predated agriculture by thousands of years. Could the impulse to build sacred architecture have emerged independently across continents at the end of the Ice Age? Pollen analysis from sediment cores around the site offered more clues. It would have been a fertile, resource-rich zone, perfect for seasonal gatherings. In a sense, it was the land itself that protected the prairie ring from erosion and plowing for ten millennia. Dr. Green's team worked around the clock that summer, knowing the fall rains could flood their trenches. They used 3D laser scanners to capture every stone and contour, creating a digital model that would outlive the excavation. When the first public images were released, a sweeping drone shot of a perfectly curved stone wall emerging from black Iowa soil, the Internet exploded. Conspiracy theorists claimed it was evidence of lost civilizations. Academics argued over terminology. But for those on site, the emotion was simple. Awe. As one graduate student put it, you could feel how old it was, like the air itself remembered. Over the following months, specialists joined the project from across the country. Archaeobotanists, sedimentologists, ancient DNA experts, and geochemists. They examined everything from burnt bone fragments to soil isotopes. Some bones turned out to be small game, rabbit, muskrat, and even turtle, suggesting food offerings. Others were too fragmentary to identify, but none showed signs of large-scale hunting or butchery. This wasn't a kill site or a settlement. It was something else entirely. Perhaps a sacred gathering space? The absence of domestic refuse, no heavy food waste, no dense tool debris, suggested the site's primary function wasn't everyday living. By the end of the year, the team had uncovered nearly 40% of the structure. They determined that the walls, originally about one meter high, had been partially dismantled and reworked multiple times, as if successive generations maintained the site. One particular layer contained larger stones packed with clay mortar. Primitive engineering. Beneath the lowest courses, Soil samples contained micro-charcoal dating even earlier, implying that humans may have used the site before the stone walls were built. The discoveries kept coming. A few miles north, remote sensing revealed additional circular anomalies, smaller but similar in shape. Were these satellite structures, seasonal camps, or evidence of an entire landscape of early ceremonial sites across the prehistoric Midwest? The implications were staggering. If multiple such structures existed, it could mean the Midwest was home to a complex network of early Holocene communities sharing a common ritual tradition, something entirely unrecognized until now. Still, controversy lingered. Some archaeologists questioned whether the alignments were intentional or coincidental. People see patterns everywhere, one critic wrote. We must guard against projecting meaning onto chance geometry. Coincidence ends where craftsmanship begins, Dr. Green replied in a conference presentation that drew standing applause. As winter set in and the site was reburied for protection, Dr. Green stood at the edge of the excavation, watching the sun rise exactly through the open arc of the prairie ring, just as it had 10,000 years ago. She tried to imagine the people who once stood there, wrapped in furs, faces turned to the dawn, watching the same light spill across the same stones. They had no writing, no cities, no metal. They were observant. They were builders. They understood the sky. It reminded scientists and the public alike that human ingenuity didn't tea begin with agriculture or the wheel. It began with curiosity, 
with the decision to shape the world into meaning. Across the Midwest, other teams began re-examining old survey data, scanning farm fields and floodplains for buried anomalies. None yet rival the size or age of Prairie Ring, but each hints that a forgotten tradition of early architecture once spanned this land. Today, beneath tarps and protective fill, the stones of the Prairie Ring sleep again. When future archaeologists return, and they will, they'll find every contour preserved in digital models, every layer archived in samples. The mystery will deepen, but so will the understanding. It was evidence that even in the ancient heart of North America, long before recorded history, humans looked to the horizon, saw the movement of the sun, and decided to build something that would last beyond their own lives. The discovery doesn't just challenge what we thought we knew. It restores what we forgot. That civilization, S. Spark didn't belong to one place or one people. It was universal born from the same human impulse to create, to remember, and to connect with the sky. And buried under a quiet Iowa field, the oldest architecture of the Americas now reminds us that the first builders of this land were here long before the story of history began.